to the ENA conference earlier this year, asking the question, what might 5G mean for emergency services? And it's might very deliberately because, of course, we don't actually know yet exactly what 5G is. We certainly don't have it. And therefore, we can't really be too sure exactly what it, it could mean for emergency services. And so the next slide, please, Christina. Um, and if I wanted to think of some glib answers about what is 5G, well, of course, it's the next generation after 4G. Um, but it does have some pretty fundamental changes and improvements associated. And we'll be talking much more about those later on, including in Pablo's presentation. Um, what could it do for emergency services or public protection and disaster relief? As I said before, nobody quite knows yet, but definitely the expectation and the hype is growing, not least uh, in the TCCA community and the ENA community, and really anyone who's focused on uh, radio communications for emergency service critical users. Next slide, please, Christina. So 5G is a brand new mobile technology and it's not just simply uh, an overspeed 4G or 4G on steroids, as I've said here. Um, included amongst the, the fundamental advancements in 5G is new radio technology and some new spectrum bands which all lead towards increased speed and capacity and reduced delay also known as latency. Um, a fundamentally new core technology uh, including the use of edge computing so, so core computing but happening out at the edge of the network, almost at the radio network. Um, features like network slicing, which would allow uh, individual user types or vertical markets to have their own virtual network within a network, and so on. So it, it's, it's pretty advanced and pretty different. And it's a fundamentally new architecture compared to 4G or anything that went before it. So it's flatter and a more seamless infrastructure with more standardized interconnections. And in the, the focus of standards, of course, that means um, a wider market, more harmonization, uh, more ability for more vendors to play in the different elements of the market, uh, which is all good for the end user. So four fundamentals of 5G include the bandwidth, which is predicted to reach at least up to one gigabit per second, and depending on which piece of hype you look at, perhaps quite a lot more. Um, latency, i.e. delay, predicted to be one millisecond or even less. Um, more energy efficiency, which when we think about, for example, the internet of things and so on, devices consuming less power and therefore have longer, longer life uh, in terms of battery. And that will be important if we have billions of independent um, sensors out in the world connected by 5G. And in that sense, the network capacity of a 5G network will be significantly increased to accommodate those millions and billions of concurrent devices. Next slide, please. So what is 5G for? Um, this particular slide uh, I basically stole and it's, it's around the 5G world very much at the moment. It, it comes from ITUR thinking about their IMT 2020, which is the next generation of, uh, of mobile communications usage scenarios. So the, the three pillars of this triangle are 
enhanced mobile broadband, in other words, faster, quicker, and so on. Um, massive machine type communications, as I was mentioning earlier, internet of things, smart city, millions and billions of sensors and devices, all connected concurrently. And ultra reliable and low latency communications, particularly for mission critical applications, um, self-driving cars and the like, which of course must be totally connected all the time because otherwise nasty things might happen. So that's the, the, the core of what IMT, uh, sorry, um, ITUR and, and the rest of the world is thinking might be the, the use case types for 5G. And if we go to the next slide, please. Um, if we think about what 5G might do for PPDR or emergency services, of course, as I say, that's an open question because we haven't defined use cases and we haven't even finished developing the standards yet. But taking two of those three pillars, first, the, the enhanced mobile broadband, well, of course, that was the initial driver for the 4G work that uh, TCCA and a lot of other stakeholders have been driving in 3GPP to get um, mission critical features and functions which were not previously available in, in 3GPP standards incorporated in 4G and, and we've been successful in that. So in that sense, 5G is just moving forward and taking a lot of that development, for example, of um, mission critical push to talk, mission critical video and mission critical data features into the, the latest generation. Then down at the bottom right, ultra reliable and low latency communications, well, there are lots of potential future capabilities arising out of those kinds of, of capabilities. And for example, mission critical users are already showing interest in um, artificial intelligence applications, virtual reality, facial recognition, uh, the use of drones, satellite communications, and so on. Um, but this is currently a pretty vague area because it's a little bit chicken and egg until we have the standards and until we have the equipment based on those standards, then we won't be able to see exactly what the use cases could be. And, and I believe there will be many more use cases than we've already been able to, to dream up at this stage. And so the next slide, please, Christina. So when can we have 5G and should you be waiting for it? Well, in terms of the standards availability, um, by the end of 2020, next year, the first standards should start to become available. Um, on that basis, by somewhere in 2022, we might see the first release of equipment based on those standards and therefore projecting forward, maybe around 2025, we might start to see some commercial deployments. Should you wait? Absolutely no, exclamation mark in bold. Um, the 4G, also known as LTE Advanced, mission critical type 3GPP standards, are now substantially complete and beginning to be implemented. So as I was saying before, mission critical push to talk, mission critical video, mission critical data are all standardized now up to 3GPP release 15 and starting to be implemented. Last week we had uh, a Etsy plug test in Finland uh, with over uh, 40 companies collaborating to interconnect and test the, the interconnectivity of their newly developed um, 
applications for mission critical push to talk and, and the other features and a very high success rate, something like 95%, encouraging the belief that the standards are uh, understandable and, and accurately defined and are capable to be translated into uh, different types of applications and equipment. Um, and those will be the things that will be starting to come to market very soon based on a 4G implementation. Um, my next point, which I always rattle out, is when you needed a computer, did you wait for the next X number of cores device to come out, or did you think, I need a computer and I need it now? There's some perfectly good ones meeting my requirements, so I'll go out and get, in this case, a 4G one rather than wait for a 5G one. Um, equally, the narrowband communications solutions we have for, for critical usage like Tetra and so on, um, and then the 4G broadband capabilities that are now filling in will remain the de facto standards for PPDR for decades yet. So there's no particular rush unless you really, really have something that only 5G can possibly uh, satisfy. Uh, to, to wait for 5G. So, as I said before, the, the, the current MCX, meaning push to talk, video, data, standards, will naturally feed forward into 5G together with new use cases, uh, which we're still imagining. Next slide, please. Uh, just a quick note on standards. So I've, I've talked about standards and 3GPP, and 3GPP is the place where, where standards for uh, all the Gs are done, and they're currently working on 5G. So we, we already have release 15. That was actually formally the first phase of 5G standardization. Um, Release 16 is being worked on right now with an aim to, to release it around about the middle of next year. And that's the second phase of 5G standardization. And then we'll go on into release 17 and so on and so on. Um, and the, the typical release cycle in 3GPP is something like 12 months. So release 17 might be available around about the middle of 21 on these these timelines. So I've mentioned the two phases, uh, release 15 and release 16. Release 15 was some more urgent work that was required for initial commercial deployments. And when I've previously said, well, we don't have 5G yet, you may say, but my local network operator is saying he's got 5G. He has, um, he's got what's called NR, new radio in uh, in his network and that's an element of 5g but it's not the whole of 5g so the rest of the 5g development comes in phase two release 16 which should be completed um, uh, should complete the 3gpp submission to uh, itur for the imt 2020 uh, uh, case um, and that will address all the currently identified use cases and requirements. Point to note, these are only standards. They're just the written down, recorded requirements, capabilities, protocols, so on and so forth. And it typically takes at least another nine to 18 months for developers to take those standards and translate them into real working software and hardware and so on. So it, don't get confused by the release dates from 3GPP. All you get then is a big stack of paper or a large hard disk. Um, you don't get 5G. Next slide, please. So just to conclude, um, as I mentioned, the timescales around 5G, by the end of 2020, there should be adequate initial standards available for vendors to begin development work. Um, around about 2022, the first equipment should start to become available. 
and around 2025, we would expect some full commercial deployments of a full 5G suite of capabilities to become mature. Just to quote the World Economic Forum in the usual way, I did a quick Google of, uh, of 5G and came up with this, this quote from the World Economic Forum. Economists estimate the global economic impact of 5G in new goods and services will reach US dollars 12 trillion by 2035 as 5G moves mobile technology from connecting people to people and information towards connecting people to everything. And indeed, I might extend that by saying connecting everything to everything, because it's not just people anymore. Um, so it may not be here today, but there's little doubt that 5G is the long term future. And that's certainly TCCA's position. So with that, I'll thank you very much and uh, ask for any questions or comments, unless, Christina, you prefer to leave those to the end. Thank you, Tony. No, I think we can uh, take uh, questions right now. So uh, you can uh, just uh, um, unmute yourself and do the question, or you can uh, write it also in in the chat. As you prefer. Nobody has questions. You see, I was so comprehensive, nobody <laughs> dares to ask me a question. <laughs> when you are well i will uh, i will uh, ask you uh, a question tony uh, when you are speaking about standards uh, can you mention some examples of uh, of the the standards that uh, are really uh, are being the drafting now um well 3GPP works in releases and release numbers. So actually for the past seven years, TCCA and other interested stakeholders have been working in 3GPP for uh, what we currently have in the 4G standards. And that spanned release 12 to the currently available release 15. Um, so if you go right now to the 3GPP website, what you can obtain is release 15 standards. And what's currently being worked on in 3GPP is the next one, release 16. Um, and that, as I said, is expected by mid of next year. Okay, thank you. Somebody has a question. If uh, I will uh, open the, if not, uh, I will. You still uh, may have time to um, to uh, ask uh, some questions to uh, Tony at the end of uh, of the the webinar. So you uh, have still some time to think about it. Okay, I will um, open. Pablo's um... so uh, Pablo can you see your presentation yes I can okay so the floor is yours Pablo okay Thank you, Christina. Uh, thanks, uh, Tony, for such a brilliant presentation. Hello to everyone. Uh, now I will I will explain a little bit uh, the, the the main parts of the of the document. Uh, I will not I will not go very deep in the contents because I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to um, take you away from the pleasure of reading the document. So I just will uh, explain the, uh, a little bit about the about the, the, the topics. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank all the people who, who participate in the doc in the document. Uh, I think uh, when we first launched the the first version, many people uh, um, 
send us uh, comments and I think uh, thank you th thank you to these uh, comments the, the document is uh, is, re is richer and uh, and the better okay uh next slide please I was trying to to pass by myself but it didn't work <laughs> okay uh the I will I will I will focus on the three points uh the the, the first point is the is what we we call the race for 5G, and uh, all the all the uh, things are are happening and are going on around the, the 5G and about the, all the all these countries uh, fighting to to be the first to have the technology. Then I will focus a little bit on the technical features, but uh, but not too much because uh, Tony already uh, explained this part uh, very good. So so I will not go very deep and. Finally, uh, we will talk about the use cases uh, of the 5G technology in the emergency services. Next slide, please. Okay, um, about about the this this just a, a little a little bit of uh, information and uh, and uh, only to to try to make people to think about the the. All the all the uh, tension uh, that are are uh, going on around around this technology and why uh, all this situation are, are, are what this situation is, is happening, um, we think that the main reasons are, of course, the huge revenues that uh, that uh, can can be reached. Here, there's a number, yeah, like a nine, 19, uh, 39 US dollars uh, in 2020. Tony also mentioned other like a bigger numbers for the for the market, so of course uh, of course uh, they will be they will be fight uh, to to be first uh, in this uh, in this technology. Also, uh, 5G is related to a digital revolution. Uh, many many new services and uh, use cases will come with the 5G, and uh, some of them we we don't even know uh, they will be there, but uh, of course. Uh, it will be it will be a big uh, a big change in our in our day-to-day um, uh, -day, uh, experience. Also, uh, uh, the, how how this uh, uh, conflict has triggered the geopolitical conflicts, uh, as uh, as you may know, China and the United States been they've been uh, accusing themselves of uh, different things, and uh, this uh, this. Uh, uh, I think this didn't finish yet. We have to to wait to see what what happens uh, with uh, these two countries and many others that uh, that may join this uh, this conflict. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, uh, the the reason why why five uh, G is so uh, disrupted uh, uh, relies on uh, on uh, these uh, these reasons. First one, the cell the cell station size is is a, a smaller than in previous uh, standards, so so uh, future uh, future developments will be cheaper and uh, easier to to establish. Also, uh, is uh, more efficiency about the energy, so our hand uh, handsets will uh, live uh, longer and uh, uh, we can we will be able to use them uh, more more time. The latency uh, uh, will be reduced uh, uh, a lot. Uh, this means that the, the the time we have to wait for the information uh, to come to to travel from from point A to point B uh, will be reduced, and uh, this will introduce many uh, use cases. And also the 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 connection uh, connection density. Uh, will increase, so this is a consequence uh, of the increase of a uh, of uh, if we want to increase the 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 information we want to we want to share, and uh, we are in a, a, a environment of a um, growing market. We need to we need to uh, uh, increase the connection density of the of the network. This one, please. Uh, we we uh, are going to, to to go through the through the use cases. 
the, uh, when, when talking about the 5G, there are many use cases, but uh, if we want to focus on the, on the emergency services and the emergency um, response, uh, we, uh, we would like to uh, uh, this a little bit noise. Yes, uh, please, uh, sorry uh, for the interruption. If uh, you can uh, mute yourself, uh, if uh, you are not uh, the speaker, it would be uh, really helpful. Okay, thank you. thank you. I think, uh, Tony, if you can uh, mute yourself uh, and also Tapio, Tapio McKinnon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will, I will, I will get one. Uh, the, the main, the main. I, I can hardly listen myself. I, I don't know if people can can listen. Okay, I, I will take it on. I think now um, it's better, Pablo. The, the, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Great, thank you. Um, the, the the main use cases uh, I would like to underline are, are this in the in the in the on the screen. The first one is the uh, intrusion detection and uh, related to the surveillance and the public safety. Five uh, G uh, will will need to be in, integrated and uh, will need to be part of uh, of then what we is being called the Internet of Public Safety Things. And, uh, and uh, this uh, this network will connect the the, the people who is uh, responsible for, for to take care of uh, our homes and uh, our our uh, our buildings our, and uh, and our give an answer when this uh, with this an alert and five uh, G uh, will be there to be the, the network to connect alerts and the people who who respond for these alerts. Also, uh, the, the uh, in the traffic control. Uh, now, um, uh, autonomous driving is uh, is something that uh, we consider belonging to the to the to the present. But in the future, it will be a technology that uh, will grow, and also uh, we will see uh, how roads can talk to to the drivers and can give them uh, information to make their 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 trips safer and also uh, make it like a. Uh, cyclists and other other people uh, uh, safe from the from the cars. So so five uh, G uh, will be will be there to to, to connect uh, cars, roads, and uh, and uh, people who is uh, who is uh, in the near the near the the roads. This one, please. Okay. Uh, also, uh, the possibility of uh, connect wearables and drones to the to the 5g networks will be an opportunity to uh, make a, to improve the safety conditions of a people who is working in the emergency for example if i can send one drone to to take uh, images of uh, one uh, fire or to or to take uh, pictures of a uh, uh, one area is being uh, is being uh, evacuated because of uh, uh, this uh, gas then uh, I can I can make it make a safe uh, condition before before the the, the firemen go there to 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 do the job. And also uh, the what is related to the health um, due to the to the decrease in the in the time of uh, response, we soon will see how uh, uh, hospitals can can. Um, uh, Give a telecare to the to the people who is in their homes. This is especially interesting for people who live in a, like a very far away from the cities, or, or, or people who who cannot uh, cannot move. And uh, they still can they will still be able to to visit the doctor and, and maybe even have something called telesurgery, where like uh, one one doctor can uh, can uh, have a surgery uh, using using the 5G network. And also managing all this medical data that uh, sometimes can be can be very heavy. Um, apart of these uh, use cases, there's there's many others. I invite you to to read the the document. I would like also to to point the the possibility of uh, of uh, thinking how uh, such a fast uh, network 
could improve the the use cases related to the machine learning and the uh, um, and the uh, uh, artificial intelligence because uh, as as far as, as I have a one one computer or one uh, uh, center who is able to do this all this computing and a fast network who is able to to move the data I can I can deploy this uh, service almost everywhere and uh, I think this is this is all uh, thank you everyone for listening and uh, if you have any questions I will be pleased to answer you thank you uh, Pablo uh, let's see if we have uh, some questions uh, we have on the chat uh, one question about um, from Alexander uh, what about the use case of public warning and alerting? Is cell broadcast still in f the 5G standards? I, I don't know if uh, Tony can give you more information about these standards. I'm, I'm not an uh, expert in the 5G standards. I do know that the 4G has, has the, this, uh, this feature and sometimes it's not being, it's not being implemented not because of technical reasons but for economical reasons i guess 5g should have these uh, these features yes i i have to say i don't have personal knowledge of whether or not uh, cell broadcast is in uh, but as you say it's in 4g and many of the useful and used features in 4g are obviously being fed forward into 5G. So if it's the case that cell broadcast is being implemented more widely and is considered to be uh, a useful feature, then I would hope and expect that it should be in 5G, but it's something that, that could be investigated online, I guess. If in doubt, Google it. <laughs> okay, thank you. You have uh, mentioned, uh, Pablo, now the um, economic reasons uh, for, especially for PSAPs, uh, if uh, they would like uh, to um, to receive and uh, to uh, 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 take advantages of the 5G, do you think they will have to invest uh, uh, a big amount of money? Uh, how well, Tony or Pablo, how do you see it? I I think the the the, the main use that the that, uh, in the I, I, at least in the medium medium term the the, the use that the PSAPs uh, could do for the 5G is related to the to the architecture of the smart cities and connecting to networks that can raise an alert. Uh, not really, not uh, necessarily uh, connected uh, or, or raised by by a human. Uh, so I think they will they will need to to make an invest investment, but maybe maybe not not very big because they can connect to these uh, to these uh, sensors to these uh, uh, alerts little by little. Yeah, and just <clears throat> excuse me, just to follow on from that, um, I can say that. PSAPs are certainly having to create the interface to 4G, and that indeed is being standardized so that for the future, uh, once again, that standardized interconnection yeah. bet between PSAPs and, and 5G and future Gs uh, should be there standardized and, and it shouldn't be a significant cost consideration for PSAPs to, to connect. Okay, thank you. Any uh, other uh, questions? Uh, here we have um, Another question from uh, from Antonio on the on the chat. Oh, we have uh, many stuff. 
Uh, the next one is uh, from uh, Jose Angel uh, Berna. Uh, IoT will be the most uh, be most uh, benefit. Uh, do you know when will be data service for IoT in 5G offered? Um, I I don't know what is what the what the Tony has to say about this. I I guess. Uh, First, uh, we we need to we need to see how 5G becomes a, a standard for using, and uh, uh, after after this happens, I think we only need to like uh, update the sensors because the, the the intelligence behind them is already there. Yeah, and I mean in terms of when services will be offered um, that's very much a function of firstly when the standards are completed and secondly of course when uh, developers develop solutions to uh, to conform to those standards and ultimately when network operators implement those those features because um, as has been alluded to previously uh, not every operator wants or needs every feature that's in the standards so uh, it's only if a particular oper operator let's say in uh, pablo's case telefonica decides that it, it sees a market in uh, data services for iot that it will go ahead and implement and and begin to offer those services so i don't think either of us is in a position to say when uh, it's more a case of how the market will develop. I I also want, would like to, to add something, and is that the, uh, I think many many um, IoT sensors and many IoT uh, use cases don't need to be 5G uh, because uh, 5G, as we said, uh, is related to the low latency and a very high speed. So, for example, if I want to read, uh, I don't know, the, the the electricity bill from uh, from uh, from the machine, I don't need to to have a five G connection. I can do this every day uh, at a fixed time. So, so I think only a few uh, sensors, only uh, the, these these sensors who are related to the five G use cases, will need to be updated and will need to be uh, deployed. Okay, thank you. Let's go to yeah, the next. Just by the way, yes, no. to uh, just sorry, Christina, just to reflect back to the previous question about cell broadcast, I took my own advice and Googled it, and uh, none other than Wikipedia says that cell broadcast is a part of the 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G standards. So, if you trust Wikipedia, it sounds as though it might be there, but I would suggest to confirm on the 3GPP website. Okay, thank you for this, uh, Tony. Let's uh, move to the next uh, question from Antonio. Uh, Non-terrestrial uh, networks will now be part of the release 17. How do you see the importance of satellites? Uh, well, if I could jump in first uh, with my TCCA hat on, we see it very important because as, as the question, and I think probably the following question suggests, um, there are always problems of, of coverage of wide area and potentially very sparsely populated areas. And uh, satellites could be uh, a significant player in that. So we're pleased to see that uh, release 17 includes non-terrestrial networks and we fully expect that there are uh, significant applications in in the mission critical uh, sector for satellite coverage okay uh, and then uh, the next question is about uh, coverage so what about countryside knowing that 5g needs a very dense coverage of antenna how could this be present everywhere, even in places with low people density, with such requirements? Yeah, and this again is a classic uh, potential application for uh, satellite uh, coverage to be used as part of a, an overall 
terrestrial stroke satellite network combination. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, oh yeah, okay, uh, very, very fast. And I, I think 5G will, would help, uh, would help uh, people who, who are not near the, the big cities because as, a, as a, I said before, the, the deployment of the infrastructure is cheaper and probably uh, this could help to 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 deploy uh, uh, coverage in in places that are right now don't 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 have. I have also here another uh, another question from Frederick. Uh, aren't all these applications basically over the top applications? Is there any reason? at all to wait on 5G to implement interesting applications? Um, no, from my perspective, as I tried to say in my presentation, you know, if, if you can do what you'd like to do over the top or, or in any other way with the sort of bandwidth latency and, and uh, capacity of 4G, then do it now. No need to wait for 5G. It's only if you really need all that bandwidth, all that capacity, and that really low latency that you should be thinking about waiting. Okay. Hi, this is Achika. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. It's, it's more of a curiosity <laughs> rather than a question. But Pablo, uh, when you mentioned uh, both in the document, and in the person in the document and the presentation internet of public safety things uh, yet one more acronym for the public safety world uh, are you aware of any efforts being done uh, nowadays or or, or plans to be done uh, in the near future about specifically internet of uh, public safety things uh, I'm not aware of any public uh, initiative to in this way but uh, uh, I think it, this little by little, uh, you can see many um, private uh, alarm systems. They are they are deploying their own uh, network and all, uh, connecting to the different uh, private and uh, public uh, pre responders. And this should evol ev evolution to to a more uh, sophisticated uh, uh, network of uh, like. Uh, uh, points of uh, alert and, uh, and respondent. Yes, and just to uh, thank you for the question and for the fact that it in, is indeed yet another acronym than we can do without quite so many acronyms in my view. Uh, this was actually coined, as far as I know, by the former chief executive of the first net a uh, broadband public safety network in the US. And uh, it's now been cast around by many, many people in, in our sector. But in practice, I'm certainly not aware of any specific internet of public safety things development going on. I'm sure there will be numerous public safety things uh, developed over time, particularly with the, the capabilities of 5G, but they'll be in the wider context of just being more capability for, for public safety and, and first responders rather than under a hat of internet of public safety things. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. That's what I, I, I expected to hear. <laughs> You're most welcome. And uh, we have another question also about uh, satellites. Um, do you mean that 5G chips would be compatible with satellite communication? Would it mean, would it be the same bandwidth? Uh, from a standards perspective, um, essentially no. What the standards will do is take account of the needs of satellite communications, in particular, I guess, things like latency. Um, later on, probably um, particular bands associated with satellite communications may be standardized in 5G, um, but I think it's early days to be talking about that just yet. OK, 
Okay, another. I don't know if you've got any views. Okay, we have another question. How will 5G segment networks and set priority? Will be their encryption keys? I'm going to defer to Pablo on this because it goes way beyond uh, my I, I, capability. I could, not, I, I could not hear very, very clear. What was the question? Can you repeat, please? Yes, uh, you can. I have put it on the on the chat. Uh, how will 5G segment uh, uh, networks and set priority uh, through encryption keys, or there will be encryption keys? Uh, I. <laughs> I have no idea how to answer this question. Uh, I think I think uh, uh, se se security need, need to be one of the of the issues to to consider in the in the deployment of of five uh, G, uh, as as everyone can can see in the news, uh, uh, countries think they 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 could be spied by other countries in the in the deployment of the of the of the networks. So I think security and, and encryption will be will be one of the of the most important uh, things to 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 take into account when 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 deployed. But we have to see. Yes, and I mean um, things like priority and preemption and indeed encryption and now, for example, network slicing are all coming through in the, the 4G stroke 5G standard. So there's no fundamental difference from a 5G point of view as to what you would need and what you would have uh, to, to allow prioritization, preemption, um, encryption, and so on and so forth. So it's not a distinctly 5G question. It's, it's essentially there. Uh, at, at many levels in 3GPP standards um, may need to be enhanced in some ways for 5G, but again, until we get there, I don't think we know. Okay, thank you. We have another, uh, will 5G replace TETRA for mission critical communications? Oh, well, this is my territory. <laughs> so um, TCCA's position is that absolutely in the very long term, 4G and now indeed 5G will ultimately replace narrowband solutions like Tetra. But that is to stress in the very long term. For at least the next decade, we expect uh, and in fact already see that Tetra is the de facto standard and the only capable standard for truly mission critical voice and, and small scale data communications. As time goes on, there will be more overlay of initially 4G and ultimately 5G data networks. But a lot of the questions we've been talking about uh, lead to the understanding that right now there is no uh, fully proven, fully capable solution that could replace Tetra and other narrowband mission critical standards. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say I, I would say it will, but uh, but uh, I I cannot say I, I cannot say when because it, of course it's a, it's a it's a matter of money and uh, and uh, this. Deploying this kind of network is extremely expensive. So, of course, it will. It, this time will come, but uh, who, who knows when? Thank you. And we have here a final co a comment from uh, uh, about uh, segmenting. Uh, segmenting is done by what is called the slicing. And uh, you have here also an example uh, from the Wikipedia about 5G network slicing and uh, there's a, a link from uh, Matix. Yes, network slicing is creating a great deal of interest in 
um, many verticals, not just the, the mission critical vertical. So the concept that each vertical could have its own slice and therefore its own virtual capability within the overall network, um, including priority, preemption, and all the other features that particularly um, mission critical users require, uh, is of great interest. I don't see any more questions, so uh, last uh, chance to uh, ask uh, any uh, questions to Tony and uh, Pablo. If not, uh, you can always uh, contact uh, them by email. I, uh, I will uh, share with you uh, the, the slides that have been presented so that they, you can uh, read them again and perhaps you will have more uh, more questions for the speakers. And uh, I don't know, Pablo and Tony, if you want to add something, otherwise we can close the webinar. No, I'd oh, like uh, to thank you, Christina, yeah. and indeed Pablo for the, the possibility to have this call and I hope everyone on the call has found it valuable. Absolutely keen to uh, to interact and answer any more questions that might arise later. So uh, thank you all very much. Yeah, the same for me. Thank you to all. Thank you very much to you, uh, Pablo and Tony, for for uh, preparing the presentations and to be present and presenting them during this webinar. And thank you all for uh, attending the, the webinar. I will last said I will share with you the materials and um, I will. Uh, I hope uh, we will uh, that you have enjoyed this this webinar. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you all. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.